182 days after these sides met in the 2023 Grand Final at Suncorp Stadium, they reunite in Round 6 of the 2024 NPL Queensland season. Good afternoon everyone and welcome to Coppolic Family Sports Park in Talabudra. As back-to-back Grand Finalists, Gold Coast United host 2023 champions Eastern Suburbs in your Sunday afternoon special. James Coglin here in the commentary booth ready to bring you all the action on FQTV and this should be a good one. Gold Coast United got their season off to a flying start, reeling off four straight wins before coming unstuck against Brisbane City last week. Well, they might have some extra motivation for this one here. As for Easts, it's been a mixed start to their current campaign and they'll be eager to pick up their first win at Talabudra since 2020 when they earned a 3-2 win on the night. Let's run through the lineups for both teams. For Gold Coast United, the coach, Craig Midgley. The goalkeeper, Layla Adams. Number three, Momo Hayashi. Four, Charlie Farmer. Five, Bronte Rose. Six, Astia Neckerbrook. Seven, Angelina Ujda. Eight, Jade Lowe. Twelve, Zoe Corbett. Thirteen, Holly Cesarago. Fourteen, Kiri Dale. And fifteen, Kira Richards-Bassett. The big out today for the home side, Dee Quirk, not playing. She is replaced by the returning Bronte Rose. Zoe Corbett is the other big inclusion. We'll be patrolling up and down her touchline. Meanwhile, for Easts, the goalkeeper is Emma Gibbon. The rest of the team selected by coach Lachlan Leong. Number two, Hakana Kachenko. Three, Holly Clark. Four, Lauren Askin. Five, Katie Musket. Nine, Chantelle Malgary. Twelve, Maya Bruckner. Number 15, the captain, Sophie Person. Nineteen, Emma Starr. Twenty-one, Stella Mazzoni. Twenty-six, May Lynn Lewis. Two changes to the starting lineup from last week's draw against Sunshine Coast Wanderers. Kyla Hansen and Naya Marsden drop to the bench for fullbacks Katie Musket and Chantel Malgary. Stella Mazzoni will shift into midfield. And all eyes will be on Emma Starr, who has scored in her last three games against Gold Coast United, including the pretty important winner in last year's grand final. Meanwhile, the captain, Sophie Person, will be leading the line, having scored three goals in five games. Our referees for today's game will be led by Caitlin Troy. The assistants are Lily Capra and Jason Gardner. The fourth official is Hannah Ruffley. And we are closing in on kickoff on a cloudy afternoon. We did just check the radar before we went live and it looks like there may be a bit of precipitation coming through in the next half hour or so. Just to add to what should be a fun afternoon on the Gold Coast. Teams met four times last season with Easts taking out two games. There's a draw here at Coplix in round 23, and Gold Coast United won the early season matchup. Mama Hayashi and Astia at Neckerbrook. Scorers for the victors that day. And it will be Easts in all orange, Gold Coast in their yellow and dark blue. And here we go, the grand final reunion gets underway. With East taking possession first, and that deflects out for a throw-in. Quickly taken by Askin, uh, as she is wont to do. Momo Hayashi just puts a boot through that one. As Clark chases it down, disappears behind the post. Which will feature quite heavily today, but a loose pass could open up a chance for Gold Coast. And there are the season opening results for Gold Coast United. Four straight wins, three clean sheets before a hard-fought defeat at Imperial Corp Stadium last weekend. Ushda dispossessed. This person brings that back under control. However, that midfield battle is tightly fought. Foul for East. And you may notice there, East have been the away team in all five games so far. And also this afternoon... They are playing their first eight games away from Heath Park due to renovations at the East Brisbane venue. Their first home game will be on the 13th of April against Souths. So the Road Warriors for the early part of the season. Nothing's considered. Two wins, two draws and a loss. Not a bad way to start the season. by Cesarago, gets it back for Hayashi. We'll play it all the way back to Layla Adams. 
It's one notable change for Gold Coast United this season. Looks like Craig Mitchell has gone to three central defenders, Cesarago, Hayashi and Dale, although it was a fairly fluid formation. Chenko hanging out Lauren Askin, very heavily involved in the opening couple of minutes, but a strong challenge by Cesarago. Person looking to tee up an offside, Bruckner. We'll have that played on. And of course, in true commentator's curse fashion, after saying we'll have some rain, the Suns decided to come out. Gibbon back after spending a bit of time with the Brisbane Raw during the current A-League women's season. Alex Smith's side picking up three points down in Adelaide yesterday. And that one is out for a throw and picked up on the fourth official. Musket at the throne, but the person unable to bring that one under control. for the home side. And this touch could break now for Corbett as she'll to tee up the teammate and well saved by Gibbon. And then a follow up on Lowe's shot. She just really slightly out of her shooting range on her side of the halfway line. It's clipped over the top for Richards Bassett to chase down and ask it with the lunging block and behind it will go for the corner. To go to the replay is well played that one in behind Musket, but East fullback recovered well. Over goes Corbett to deliver this in-swinging ball. Four options waiting at the top of the box. Dale arriving late. She's picked up by Bruckner. It's a lofted ball in. It's headed on by Lowe. Dale at the far post. Bruckner almost shouldered that one away. And Dale will usher that one over the byline for another corner. taken quickly back it goes for Dale is short to get it onto the left foot towards the back post and too tall for everybody and that will allow Gibbon to take once she gets the ball back from on behind the fence Park back to Gibbon who a little bit too much power on that one. Corbett. You see the throw in to Cesarago. Nagari there for the header to nod it over the sideline. And another throw in for the home side. Cesarago. Do you have the throw in ready to go or? Will she look for a short option? Ball's just pinned down on the near sideline in the east half at the moment. And I am obligated to bring up that by this point in the grand final, East were 1-0 up, courtesy of Emma Starr. the opening six and a half minutes. It has been the home side dominant in territory and that shot will 
Drift wide from Ujda. going short from goal kick again and Star is dispossessed and the chance could be on now. Neckerbrook with the curling effort and just wide. And he's playing with fire at the back and almost punished by Arcia Neckerbrook. The press was on it. was Rusha winning the ball back and it was a great chance. Scored six goals in all competitions last season. And a foul in the way of East. Step on Dale. Dale recovers well and is able to hook that one up the line. And Richards Bassett concedes the corner against the NPL veteran Sophie Person. And by my numbers, 83 career NPL goals across a number of clubs. Sweet has certainly made her mark in a time down under. Can she get the end of this corner here? Well, it's going near post instead, and it's knotted behind, and looks like it will be another corner. As Adams was put under plenty of pressure with that delivery. in the six yard box all the other runners are waiting on the edge of the 18 one goes up as swing delivery again towards the edge of the six yard box it could fall for person who's it's like a captain's armband is actually put down around a forum I was wondering what that was She to take the goal kick. Star wins. Here is low. Loses out. Lewis. Is it to the right? And Star is slow to get up from that contested header and keep an eye on. 19 is let's get another free kick a third of the game I mentioned this in the introduction scored three goals in the last three games against Gold Coast United the equalizer in round 23 the winner in the grand final and also the insurance goal in round 14 last year, so you get the feeling Gold Coast United might be monitoring her quite closely as the afternoon goes on. You can hear the instructions loud and clear from both benches. In swinging delivery, looking for Kachenko. It's her only as far as the penalty spot before low. Knocks it away. The two twelves colliding there. Corbett and Bruckner. Taking too long for the delivery. And it could break now for Gold Coast. Corbett steaming through the middle. If she can be picked out by Rose's pass. It's a great ball through. Richards Bassett there as well. Corbett with the two one in the box. And in the end, the side will be 
not happy with the concession of the corner, but they probably won't be too upset either with the way Gold Coast United managed to break. It was Malin Lewis tracking back to close that one down. Can Corbett on the telling delivery. by Clark. The person helps it out of the 18-yard box, but Gold Coast will retrieve and look to stay on the front foot. The pass is just retrieved, although it could work out now for East. If Mazzoni can bring that one under control, she can't. Possession lost. Dale to slide it through for Hayashi. Given nods it on for Askin. That would have been exactly the way that was drawn up, but it's all worked out quite well. And now it could break here as pressure is on. Richards Bassett just hoofs that one away. And we're starting to see this game open up as we approach the quarter of our quarter of an hour mark. Chances at both ends of the pitch. This is the penultimate game of round six of NPL Queensland. Yesterday we had Penn Power 3-0 winners over QAS. Brisbane City with a spectacular second half rally to beat Mitchelton 4-1. An Olympic 1-0 over Sunshine Coast Wanderers. Today we've got this game and kicking off at 5 p.m. local time, about 45 minutes from now. Souths will be hosting Lions and wouldn't you know it, the rain has started. Not the heaviest downpour just yet, but let's see if that is yet to come. Beautiful ball through, could break for Bruckner, but Hayashi, the reigning NPL player of the year, is to cover up. And that one is a bit too far in front of the Gold Coast attackers for them to chase it down. Another loose pass could break now for Gold Coast. That's a round to run through low. Unable to get by and Brandy Rose just fires that one over the bar. Might have been a bit of a range finder for her as she returned to the starting lineup as we see the replay. That's the second time East have been caught out like that. Low, unable to find a way through Lewis. Back on live pictures. Foot race is on. Clark was hoping that one would roll over the sideline, but instead has to just play it into the fence. The way the rain is falling on the screen. There might be a bit of a breeze at the back of Gold Coast United at the moment, which could be useful on a throw-in or a corner perhaps, but not on this occasion as Wilson is back marking a fellow number 15. Throw in as Henry just 
Only played as far as one of the Gold Coast players and the chance could be on now. It's a rolling shot and it's off the post. So close for Jade Lowe again. That's another great chance. As Gold Coast the press is starting to create some half chances and I wonder how many more Easts are going to be able to survive. Back on live pictures, Kachenko out for Marjorie and Corbett close down the angle. It's another throw in for the home side. And Kachenko actually tackled Askin. It's true centre back nature, I suppose. Just tackle anyone in your way. Dale, put that one forward for Hayashi, but I'm able to keep that one in. And the rain is starting to pick up now. See some more passes fizzed around as Bruckner can't get by Hayashi, but Lewis almost completed a spectacular turn. Some of the supporters on the sideline possibly starting to seek shelter if they didn't bring the umbrellas. Well, quite a few appear to have come prepared on that far side near the car park. Are going on everywhere. <laughs> the another throw in for East, just inside the Gold Coast half. But, uh, Trying to turn on Ujda. So not the quick header, but finds the feet of Dale. Rose trying to tee up Corbett on the angle, but can only pick out Kachenko. Gibbon. A a hook on that one, is it? Goes out just on the east side of halfway. Bassett, but a bit too far in front of her as Randy Musket is there to pop up. Musket, an ever-present for East. Got 30 games last year out of a possible 32. Started 29 of them. So we still wait for that first breakthrough. As last season's grand finalists face off for the first time. Again, committed to playing it out from the back, even if it has backfired once or twice, and the optimistic shot might have hoped to catch Gibbon out, but didn't quite have the power on it. And again, the playing out from the back could catch out. Here is Ushter is in, and there's the opening goal. It's been coming. Gold Coast United strike through Angelina Ushter. And it is 1-0 to Gold Coast United. And it was started and finished by the number seven. 
And again, East trying to play out from the back. The passing just not quite as sharp as they'd be hoping for. And finally, after a number of chances, Gold Coast United have the lead. Rooster's first goal of the season and after winning the club senior golden boot for her efforts in the under 23s last season, Rooster is now scoring for the first team. Vaskin lets that one go through. Corbett tracking a long way back. Today she's lining up as what looks to be a right midfield role, but is equally adept playing at fullback when needed. Having to put on the afterburners to chase that one down. Did just that. Cross going in looking for Rose. It's been the focal point of a lot of those long balls from Gold Coast. We talk of versatility in this team. Bronte Rose. She's also spent plenty of time playing central defender, especially in her time at Souths. team player Bronte Rose whenever she's needed although some may have an issue with a striker wearing number 5 however Rose's return does speak for itself 4 goals in 4 games so far and if that wasn't enough also she scored 16 goals in all competitions last year, including three hat-tricks in three weeks. It's an option to lead the line for Craig Midgley. Especially with his other potent striker watching on today, Dee Quirk. He's back in Gold Coast United colours after spending last season with Palm Beach in the FQPL South Coast competition. Zoni. Oh, just doing that one and again it's Gold Coast. Almost there as she gets the ball back for the home side. Hey Ashi. Lofts that one over the top as Rushta chases it down. Gibbon decides for the no nonsense approach this time. Second ball is won once again by the team in yellow and blue. And Hayashi, this is her range, taking the shot on. And that was the range finder for Momo Hayashi. And I would love to know the inner thoughts of Emma Gibbon as that one was struck and travelling towards the goal. If you are just tuning in, 25 minutes played. NPL Women's Round 6, Gold Coast United 1-0 up over East, courtesy of AJ Ujda's goal. In the 21st minute as Gold Coast to add to their advantage. James Coglin in the commentary booth bringing you all the action on this rainy Sunday afternoon. And if you're watching from indoors, some might say you made the right decision today. All others may say this is football weather, so what do I know? I'm just a guy with the microphone. And 
terms of head to head here at Complex, this has been pretty one sided. Played eight games at this venue. Gold Coast United, four wins, three draws. And just the one win for East back in 2020 during Gold Coast Premiership winning season. East were actually one of only two teams to knock off Gold Coast United during the regular season that year. Lions, another team to pick up three points. However, it didn't end the way they were hoping. We're under It was Logan who came here and won that semi-final. It was a gripping contest, 1-0. Logan Lightning. It's East, they finally broke through for their first piece of silverware in the NPL era last weekend. And now they could be on for the equaliser, but Hayashi sprung out of her defensive spot to intercept that one. And a rush of blood perhaps is... More rolls to the feet of Gibbon. Well, they committed to trying to play their way out east, but the passes just aren't going where they want them to. Commitment from Lachlan Leong. He's got his side playing that style of football and on the sideline issuing some animated instructions. And that did come off the back of low. All head to head as well, if you're curious. Six wins for Gold Coast United, five draws, and four wins for East. It's just in the NPL era. In terms of goals scored, Gold Coast United 28, East 20. Robert playing it behind Rose, and that's accepted by Kachenko. by Corbett. And she's back on the ball and clip it over the top and Gibbon saw what was coming and is able to get there ahead of Rose. Richards Bassett. Get the touch but He's now back in possession. Clark. Not sure who that one was targeted at. Perhaps kind of roughly the fourth official. And Rookner unable to get away with that shove in the back. Was spotted by Ms. Troy. And Hayashi will. Wasn't that long ago? She took a shot on from a long way away. Is she thinking about it? She can hit it and. Hayashi instead puts it into the box. Header on by Lowe and oh, so close. It just went over the crossbar, but great delivery from Hayashi as we go to the replay. Just clip ball in and dropped it right on the head of Jade Lowe. And now back to live pictures as Cesarago has got the ball back. You can only play it off Lewis for the throw in. Cross from Cesarago and Lowe stepped on the ball and that's well that East to converge in numbers. Farmer take the shot on Charlie Farmer. And 
to work into the Gold Coast first team, Charlie Farmer. Just a teenager during that 2020 Premiership winning season, but she's a seasoned NPL veteran. Sirago back to goal and at the insistence of a number of players in orange that is going to be an East throw in. And did that come off Corbett? It did not. The Cesarago to take the throw in. Encouraging thing, I suppose, if you are Gold Coast United. Three clean sheets already this season. And looking to make it four. Although East do have plenty of firepower if they can get the ball down that end of the pitch, but like we've spent the majority of this match with the camera pointed at this end of the ground, the northern end. If we check my compass bearings. I'm holding it up. Well, and Dale comes across in cover. She'll just launch that one into concrete seating. And did that stay in? And well, the whole of the ball did not cross the whole of the line, according to. Assistant referee Gardner. He had a better angle on that, so I'll defer to his judgment. Mason to get a bit more involved when her team is in possession. It's Drop back a bit deeper. And back they go to Gibbon once more. position well as the pass is intercepted by East but again they can't manufacture anything of course getting the ball back very quickly they have not been an inch thus far to the visitors and through 35 minutes struggling to remember East really having a clear cut chance so far a couple of corners Need a clear chance. A great touch by Neckerbrook. She'll play it away from Clark, but the defender recovered well. And Clark. To keep an eye on Astia Neckerbrook. Right of screen might notice the shade tail up over the car. You know, that's clever innovation if you ask me. Back for Cesarago who loft it towards the edge of the six yard box and it's still there and low goes close once again. Although it might have come 
But a bit of a price as she walks away watching the hip area. And to the replay and it's been a collision on the follow through of the shot. Hopefully it's just a stinger. to paying it forward. Gibbon switched it over to the near side. A bit too far to the near side as Hungary can only watch that one sailing over her head. Cesarago to take the throw in. And Corbett able to find Way around, he stuck the foot in and went out Gold Coast before they could get the ball in the box. And a lot of action in and around this white pole, which might be the second most famous white pole in NPLW, just after the one at Wakeley Park. Marketing grain, it he says there's a chance for a sponsorship sticker there, but I'll leave that one alone. We have another throw in deep in the east half. Corbett trying to turn around as Kachenko was there. Work by Rose, but three East players, one out. And Askin trying to play it clear, but Hayashi can't escape from Star, but she's got to chase a loose ball down now. She'll hit it first time, and it's a bit of a howler from Gibbon, but the defence might be there to break her out. Shot is on, and it's in. There's two. No respite for East, and it is Jade Lowe after countless chances finally gets her goal. In the shadow of half time. And through it goes and just chaos at the back. And it all started with Gibbon unable to bring that one under control as Lowe gets her second goal of the season. And there will be some big questions to be answered by Lachlan Leong in his halftime team talk. As Gold Coast they have a 2 0 lead, but there's been a pretty high scoring NPL campaign so far, not just for these two teams, but across the board. A 2 0 lead isn't safe. So we've got that scoreboard updated. to get one back just before we go to the break. Carson just hasn't been as sharp as we've seen in the past from East. You can hear the instructions being picked up by the effects mic. They want the ball to be moved quicker. Are the avenues available? One way to get an avenue is with a free kick. It's considered. It's been a pretty clean first half. Most of the free kicks conceded by Gold Coast have been for minor infractions rather than anything overly malicious or cynical. The ball, but couldn't find a way past Richards Bassett. Oh, 
Reynolds, all breaking Gold Coast's way at the moment. The deflected clearance fell to Hayashi, who was able to launch it clear. And Musket now chasing the ball down, but it has gone over the sideline. There we go. Scoreboard says 2-0 to Gold Coast. but here is Hayashi and finding space down that left side, Neckerbrook. She's ushered to the byline by Clark. Now it goes for a throw-in. Deep in the east half. Two minutes of Normal time remaining, plus whatever stoppages are added on. And back come for the free kick after person was fouled. Clark find a target in orange. Allowed to bounce and there's a space. Dale plays it to Hayashi. Closed down by Askin. And down goes Momo Hayashi. And it's too far for everybody. Behind it rolls for goal kick. Have not been that good for East so far, but it appears as though they've decided to abandon the short option, at least for this one, as given or dump it long. Long close first to the ball again. Back it goes for Gibbon. Closed down as yet by Rose. Sideline it goes. through the cavalcade of feet. And as we even reach the halfway line as Richards Bassett it's thrown Dale again there to mop up. Kieran Dale has been so busy in this first half. Now there's a bit of space for Askin if she can make use of it. Wait to star. Corbett sliding on the wet surface. Gold Coast now getting the ball back. Ushta trying to find Rose. She's marshalled by Pachenko. Putting her experience to good use. Pressed by Richards Bassett. We've taken a touch as it on the sideline, it did. East with the throw in. And that will be the end of the first half here at Coplick Family Sports Park. Gold Coast United up 2 0. Goals from AJ Ujda and Jade Lowe. We'll be back with the second half on FQTV after these messages.
Belton Industries is proud to be the official shelter and grandstands partner of Football Queensland. Felton offers a range of premium aluminium grandstands, from elite portable spectator seating to soccer team shelters for players and coaches. Give your fans the best view of the game with Felton's comfortable spectator seating. With sun-safe shelters or powder-coated in your team colours, Whatever your club needs, Felton has a high-quality, low-maintenance seating option to suit. We are the pioneers in Australian-made grandstands and team shelters. Contact Felton today on 1800 834 016 or visit felton.net.au.
Welcome back, everybody, to Coplick Family Sports Park here in Talabudra. A very wet Coplick Family Sports Park. It's, it's round six of the NPL Women's Competition. Gold Coast United taking on East. James Coglin in the commentary booth bringing you all the action in this grand final reunion from 2023. It is Gold Coast United. Two goals to the good. AJ Ujda scoring in the 21st minute. Jade Lowe adding the second in the 40th. Teams have had their halftime break. We are ready for the second 45-minute instalment of this Sunday afternoon special. And we are almost underway. Now we are with a blast of Miss Troy's whistle and uh, shot straight away and given. Took her eye off that one and would have been optimistic to have somebody down there that quickly, but... Conditions is making it tough for goalkeepers. Hayashi with a thumping header. Given. Chase that one down. Very interested to see in this second half if East stick to their preferred short passing game or they well, look to mix it up a little bit more. They were caught out. A number of times in that first half, it led to a couple of the goals. As it's fair to say, Askin didn't agree with that decision. Star just getting an explanation. And Hayashi to take. Oma Hayashi, will she shoot? Will she opt to deliver. Both are very much on the cards. That magical right foot. There it goes and it's towards the edge of the six yard box and Gibbon with a very nervous punch away is shadowed over the sideline. Gibbon, she's been a bit uneasy in the last few minutes. We'll say we'll get that confidence back on track. Falls for Rushto, but the heavy touch lets her down. And Hayashi. Back on the ball is sprinted out to the right. Corbett forced to track back towards the halfway line to bring the ball down. Getting it back, Mazzoni. And that's what the East passing can do, is it? It's into the Gold Coast half. Person looking to turn provider. Beautiful ball over the top for Bruckner, but Adams read it well. It's a frustration from the East, number 12. Take that one back for Gibbon. Let me pick out Kiri Dale as a number of Gibbon's passes have done this afternoon. Lewis picked off in midfield by Lowe and play it forward now. Neckerbrook. And short to Chip Gibbon. And oh, that was a crunching hit from Corbett on the goalkeeper. But it's allowed to play on. Bruckner getting it out for Starr, who's steaming down the sideline. Emma Starr going towards the box, trying to cut back inside. Richards Bassett just does enough to disrupt her with the cross to the back post. And that was as good a chance as East have had all afternoon. Emma Starr, she's doing what she can to bring East back, but a good tackle. Yeah, they're in the angle just a bit too tight for Askin. That was 
A bit of build-up down this near side. East's just showing there is still a bit of life in this team. Don't count out the comeback just yet. as person with the captain's armband wrapped around her elbow. Gold Coast. Getting the ball back and pressure by Rose. Pass for Gibbon. He's got time to clear it away but again it's Curie Dale oh, she's got a magnet in her boot or something but the ball just seems to keep finding her every time East try to play it away so a check of the radar as well it looks like the rain will stay fairly light throughout the second half if not disappearing that was different throw in technique from Richards Bassett but bit of leeway never hurt anyone I suppose the press almost catching out musket nice long this time it finds Hayashi but He's getting the ball back. Person checks her run. And for Bruckner, but again, the radar just not quite there. That allowed Farmer to cut out that attack. Bruckner thumps that one the legs of Dale and behind it goes for East to have a corner their fourth of the afternoon so, long ball in towards the back post and it's headed up by Farmer and just over the crossbar as there's a bit of pressure put on the Gold Coast defence. If you see the replay. As East earn another corner. I'm not entirely sure how much Charlie Farmer knew about that one. When it landed, but got it away. Another high delivery looking for Marjorie, and it could fall, and it's in, it's over the line. And it is, of course, Emma Starr, her fourth goal in four games against Gold Coast United. It's all a little bit helter-skelter, but Starr was waiting, and it is another goal against the yellow and blue. So there we go. It's game on here as Starr gets her third of the season. And after a false start, as Corbett jumped out of the blocks a little bit early. And that was why she jumped out of the blocks early. Hayashi was looking to play her in. And the star has started this second half. And the house on fire. She's really taken this game by the scruff of the neck. And here she is trying to 
Ian Askin, who's stolen a step. Brookner's waiting in the box, as is Lewis, and it's not cleanly taken on the first attempt by Adams. And that goal has really woken up Easts. Adams able to regather. season star scored seven goals in all competitions three of them were against Gold Coast this year three goals thus far and we do have the first change of the afternoon coming up it is Malin Lewis getting replaced by Kyla Hansen A change in midfield very much an attack Minded change. Oh, Hanson making move down Old Cleveland Road from oh, great shot and well saved by Gibbon. Kyle Hanson mentioned making the move down from Capalabar. Scored 12 goals for the Bulldogs last season in a campaign that ended in their relegation. Certainly a bright prospect, Kyla Hanson. Richards Bassett was unable to keep that one in. There's Hanson looking to link up with Star. Person dispossessed, but pressure from the East striker and. Marjorie took it off the feet of Person. And there's Hansen on the turn. Cutback wasn't there. Richards Bassett. Win the goal kick by playing it off Kyla Hansen. And over comes Adams to collect the ball. Layla Adams, she made 11 appearances for Gold Coast last season. She was the first choice throughout April and May before... Being replaced by Mia Bailey, who joined after spending time with the Brisbane Raw. But now the junior Matildas rep is getting first crack at the number one jersey for Craig Midgley's side. And after a false start, Hayashi send that one high and towards the halfway line. Low. To bring that one under control off the touch from Kachenko. Gold Coast getting the ball back and Rose zigged when Neckerbrook was expecting it to zag. Bassett over the top. Not on a control well by Corbett, who fancied a shot but couldn't get clean contact on it. East has scored with their one shot on goal thus far. Coast definitely creating more chances, but they could be caught out. Star puts the pressure on Hayashi and Sirago is forced to concede the throw in. And behind it goes. This will be another corner for East. That is one statistical category they've definitely dominated as Corbett is down, clutching the right foot. Punched away well by Adams, but top of the box, and that shot is blocked. And it looks like we'll have a stoppage. Now, oh, is that one 
Perhaps caught Corbett on an angle. She was down injured before and back to live pictures. Hanson back for Musket. Avery winning it back well. She'll take on the shot herself and a comfortable height for Adams to claim. She might have landed a little bit awkwardly on that arm, but continuing. And a free kick going away of this after Rooster is holding on. Wasted ball in the end as that rolls over the byline. <laughs> this is the first meeting since last season's grand final. Suncorp Stadium last September. Gold Coast United, seven starters. From that day, we're starting once again. Cicerago, Hayashi, Dale, Farmer, Neckerbrook, Corbett, and Rose. And Kira Richards Bassett came off the bench that day. She's starting here. So, eight members of the squad all up. Carla Hansen, she wasn't involved that day. She'll look to play it in. It could break now for Bruckner, but can't get the clean shot. She just scuffed it. The frustration was etched on her face. The chances are starting to mount now for Easts. Clark. Pass forward and Hanson added another level of dynamism to this East team. This East team that had nine starters from the grand final starting today. Gibbon, Musket, Kachenko, Clark, Marjorie. So the entire back five has returned been retained. Star is the only midfielder. He's held down a spot. It's unchanged front line with Bruckner, Person and Askin. Beautiful ball forward from Ujda picking out Rose. Corbett. And Rose getting their signals mix mixed up, but Rose has stayed down. can see what happened here with Rose. Oh, looks like she might have been cleaned up by Kachenko. And now play will resume with an East free kick for the foul on that far sideline. Short passing again, but Gibbon. Radar is just not working today. And just to finish off that thought from earlier, two players from the bench from East Grand Final are also involved. Stella Mazzoni is in the starting lineup after coming off the bench in the Grand Final and Rose on the ground again. This time she does get the free kick. Well, Jess Curran didn't play on the day, but I would not be surprised to see her introduced as we move closer to 90 minutes. Let's make sure I got that one out. Dale just asking Hayashi for her thoughts. Richard Bassett is all alone on that near sideline. 
And it's squared for Hayashi to get a better angle, but that's always fading away. And if there's one player in the competition that does have freedom to shoot from that distance, it is Momo Hayashi. That's the epitome of the no, 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 no. Oh, yes! When it comes to shooting from long range. Pinballing in midfield, it falls now for Person who plays it just behind Askin. Force her to check her run. And the watchful eye of Cesarago, who is not strong overall today, but and the throw in goes east way. Cesarago taking the ball off the feet of Askin. Hayashi launches that one towards the east bench. Mazzoni. With the throw in, it found its way to Hayashi. Low. And Corbett will tee up Rose, but watched very closely by the centre back pairing of Clark and Kachenko. There's a veteran, Hakana Kachenko. Back for Gibbon and under no pressure from Gold Coast. That high press really did lay the platform for the, their success in the first half, but they're picking and choosing their moments now. And did that come off the arm of Richards Bassett? It did. Feels a bit harsh calling that one a foul on the stats that you'll see on the screen, but... Bassett hard to challenge a star well, but in that second attempt, star does get the ball. I thought she got the ball and does come at the cost of a throw in. Just under 25 minutes of normal time remaining. 2 1 to Gold Coast United. Driven. Neckerbrook forward for Rose, but Kachenko too strong in the challenge. Misjudged the flight of that one and it allowed Dale to clean up. And the chest and again, Kiri Dale. Incredibly busy. And there she is again, under the watchful eye of Person. With the shoulder of Musket. Bassett, she's enjoying an extended run in the starting 11 for Gold Coast United. 14 of her 19 appearances last season came off the bench. This is her sixth start from six games this season as Hayashi is dragged down. And Star just encourages Hayashi to get up. Under the eye of Lachlan Leong. Now she will launch that one deep towards the east box. And it goes for Farmer. And Mazzoni happy to concede the throw in. 
Oh, the Gold Coast United subs. A number of 23s players filling out the bench. And that is from the first half. Jade Lowe scoring the second goal for Gold Coast United. But now we turn our attention back towards East who attack through person with the ball and Hanson's there at the far post and the first touch shot just couldn't get the power on it Adams just asks for calm and she makes her third save of the day and it was considered that could have been a much tougher assignment if Hanson got a little bit more power on that and she could be called on again here as person take the Shot is chested back by Richards Bassett and Adams races out to claim that. And Rose giving up the chase. I oh, beg your pardon, that was Neckerbrook not giving up the chase. Gibbon. Alert to the danger, and so the best thing to do is to launch it towards the car park. And now she, back it goes, and Hanson straight through Richards Bassett, and. Crunching effort as Richards Bassett has stayed down and or oh, in the replay I can tell you Momo Hayashi just asking questions up whether or not it should be a booking and any contact. Foul was sufficient for that one in the mind of Ms. Troy. This is Richards Bassett who won the header. Clark can only play it off Richards Bassett. Is just have a target on her back in the last couple of minutes. It remains 2 1. Can East find a way? Back, can they find an equaliser? Mazzoni. For his star. Pushing forward and now picking out Mazzoni. It's deflected off the leg of Hayashi and that was just enough to get it into the welcoming arms of Adams. And another challenge on Richards Bassett and well on the advice of the assistant referee in the crowd that will be a yellow card for Chantel Malgary. That was her first booking of the campaign. Gold Coast really capitalise on that free kick and now they're on the defensive again as great work by Farmer to mop up. Nickerbrook can't bring that one under control. Clark will play it back for Gibbon. He's afforded time to pick a pass and sends it Back to Clark. Askin will put on the afterburners. Will she get to it first? She did. Unable to find a way around. Cesarago, who 
Not able to prevent the corner. Sends it over the sideline. Throw in for East. It's a curling. It bounces into the arms of Adams. Clear change in setup now for East as well. Chantel Gregory has moved into the midfield. Mazzoni to fullback. A great turn by Ushter. It's clipped over the top. Neckerbrook chases it down, but Clark reliable as ever. And cut out. Last year, Neckerbrook before she can cause too much damage. Quarter of an hour remaining. And Rooster has made her way to the sideline. Not sure if she's been substituted or this is just an injury. And we'll confirm that one in a second. Either way, action on the pitch has continued and is now in the hands of Gibbon. And I believe I can see Sophie Parker on the number nine. That is Sophie Parker, who has replaced AJ Ujda. Parker, but Clark winning that battle. It's given. Launches it away. There is confirmation of the substitution. Ayashi, this time with the left, plays it out for Corbett as she can turn on the Jets, but oh, it was a finish just for show from Rose as the ball had already crossed the sideline. Parker has been promoted from the 23s team to the seniors this season and at least according to the club socials she's described as an exceptional passer what can she do in her fourth appearance of the season well we know what Emma Starr can do she's got the ball back and she's trying to will her team towards an equaliser Finding Bruckner, no room for the shot there as Starr will send that one wide and behind for a goal kick. And the rain is back. That seems like as good a time as any to tell you what we've got coming up in round seven next weekend. Friday night, Lions Olympic, 8.30 p.m. And Saturday, Brisbane City, Penn Power from Imperial Corp Stadium, 3 o'clock. Sunshine Coast Wanderers are hosting Gold Coast United at 6. And Mitchelton will be hosting East at 7.30. And then next Sunday at 5.30pm, it is a QAS against Souths. And if you've been watching the NPL for a long time, you don't need me to remind you that all these games are live and on demand on FQTV. And much to the surprise of the East bench, Gold Coast getting the throw in as Rose... Runs it on, Kachenko back for Gibbon. 11 minutes plus stoppages for the visitors to find an equaliser. Musket to bend that ball on the sideline and she finds Hansen who's gotten by Dale and there perhaps could have been an advantage 
played, but instead come back for the yellow card. And I've got to be honest, it's a fair question to ask. As Kiri Dale has shown the yellow card. There have been an advantage played. Well, I suppose if East can capitalise on this free kick, it'll all be a moot point. And asking. Dressing the ball is two player wall from Gold Coast is set up. I wonder is the angle just a little bit too tight for the shot? Adams is positioned near enough to the centre of the goal. Left foot of Askin, low driving ball, it's turned in and it's an own goal. As East draw level with 10 minutes to go, it was perfect delivery. Off the set piece. And that is going to go down as an own goal against Jade Lowe. And well, we're set up now for a grandstand finish here as East have come storming back in the second half. Now, can Gold Coast find a response or will East capitalise on the momentum? Well, they're looking for it now. It's Person driving towards the box. And she'll look to square it for Askin, but the pass just not where she needed it to be. And it could break now for Person. Looking for the cutback. Askin able to find a way around Cesarago and... This is where Gold Coast, it is a relatively young team from front to back. Just need a bit of composure. There's Rose forward, but it's picked off by East. Dale is just a bit of back and forth. Malgary in the midfield. It's a work around one, work around two. She'll take the shot on and... A bounce, just catching Adams out. That was great work from East. Fullback turn midfielder, Chantel. Now agree, goes one way, goes the other, gets it onto her left, and with the rain driving down, take a chance. with players on both posts. Watching very closely. Can ask and find another telling delivery. It's lofted in. Adams a long way off her line. Gets a punch away, but can she be caught out now? It's Hanson cutting back onto the left. She'll take the shot on. And oh my God, that is a special strike. Kyla Hanson off the bench. And East now have the lead. Well, we've been waiting for East to wake up, and they've done so. Kyla Hansen with a top draw finish, and now with seven minutes to go, East look like they're on their way to three points. Well, how about that for a comeback? 54th minute, Emma Starr. 82nd minute, it was the own goal from Lowe. And barely 60 seconds later, we've got substitutions now for Gold Coast. It's Isabella Andrews coming on. And another player as well. Oh, we're all set up now for an even more chaotic finish. And Phoenix Rogers comes on in the number 22 Jersey as well. Confirm who for momentarily, but in the meantime, now Gold Coast, after thinking they had the three points in the bag, they're going to have to fight just to come away with a draw. Oh, 
Walker back. Now it's turned over and East. Can they find a fourth? All right, so everyone's got a minute now. They can catch their breath to gear up for what should be a frantic final five minutes. It's not too harsh to say they were pretty average in the first half, but whatever was said in the sheds clearly has worked wonders. And Star with the curling ball, and Adams just has to punch that one over. And Gold Coast are finding themselves on the back foot. You see the replay, and I'm not entirely sure that was meant to be a shot on target, but Star, I'm sure, will take it. Swing corner cleared away. Not completely dealt with though as shot was taken on by Askin. Rose with the sliding clearance and Gold Coast, they need the ball to come down to the other end of the pitch. Corbett, oh, she is lashed out there. Corbett, this could kick off here as Star now getting the skin of her opponents. A yellow card for Emma Star out of all of that. Yeah, she. Yeah, but Hanson, she's had plenty to say since coming on. Oh, big pardon, that was Musket. There is Hanson as she's dispossessed by Parker. Ball forward now for Lowe. Rose moving into the 18-yard box. The ball just behind her. It could fall now for Rogers. She tries to square it. Corbett will take the improvised strike and wide it goes. Phoenix Rogers now leading the line for Gold Coast. He's given taking every second available to her at the moment. Not quite ready to take the yellow card for the team just yet. Two players withdrawn in that change were Richards, Bassett, and Neckerbrook. That was not an ideal clearance from Cesarago, and unsurprisingly, after playing on a wet pitch, there are some very heavy legs from both sides. And Rogers. On the end of that one, here's Dale asking for options. Ahead of her, and that one will skid ahead of Andrews. Parker dispossessed. Daniel has to rush that pass, and it's worked out well for Issa's person. Can she find a way to put the game to bed? Well, not with Hayashi. Watching closely. Dale got under that. Dale stepping out from defence. Sixty seconds of normal time to go. We we have these three minutes of time added on to play. That 
one is thundered off low for the throw in. Paddy Musket will take her time with this throw in. Farmer for Hayashi. Go back to Adams. Gold Coast here to get the ball down the other end of the pitch and not turn it over like that as it's gone to Star. Person waiting for the cross. And Star will just play that off Corbett for the corner. And we are now into stoppage time. Uh, over to take. East unsurprisingly not committing too many bodies forward for this one. And it does look like they'll deliver it into the 18-yard box. No short corner here. As it's punched up into the sky by oh, a person who could have had an open goal if she wanted it. Hansen, well she scored one spectacular one, but can't quite get the second. I oh, know she's going to get the distance with these goal kicks and you would assume she's going to make her way further forward. Oh, first, they need to be able to get the ball in their possession. Another throw in Mazzoni. Throwing the ball off as East will employ what I think can be diplomatically called a patient approach here. And Gold Coast just keep conceding the throw in, so can't get the ball off East at the moment. Touched by Rose. She's surrounded by three orange shirts. Forward, headed away by Musket, and there's no second level support from Gold Coast, which has given East the ball back. And well, that's played towards the corner, but I think Hansen was on the same page expecting that. There might have been an optimistic call for handball from the crowd. And Hayashi under pressure from Person. And now it's East turn to put the high press on and and Dale unable to escape. And it's one back by Muscat and Hansen as a tandem. And they'll happily just play that to the corner. Hayashi playing Hansen on side. She's going along the byline. Can she deliver it across? She cannot. As Lowe comes back in cover. This is all down the wrong end of the pitch for Gold Coast as East have done a spectacular job. Just closing it out in the last five minutes. They have not given Gold Coast a sniff. Now the slow walk to the corner. And this one will appear to be going short. As Askin will play it for Bruckner and will hold it there for as long as possible as Dale gets it back and she'll thump it up the sideline, but it is Unable to stay in. So it will be another East throw in. Surely we're about close to full time here now. And Hansen will take it to the byline and Lowe can only concede the corner. There's East. 11 on the afternoon. It took a while to get going in East, but oh, they finished with the west of sails, which seems appropriate considering the weather. And 
towards the corner it goes. Bruckner holding it again, and it is going to be an East throw in. Turning towards Person. And she might look to ice again now with a run along the byline, squares it towards Askin, and Hansen probably. Going against her natural instincts to control the ball. Just lets that roll over the sideline. And we have now ticked over 95 minutes played. Surely this will be it. First win in three weeks for East. One is allowed to roll over the byline. Do Gold Coast have the chance for one last forward foray? Can someone just launch it? And they've got to get the ball clear as it's sent long, but Kachenko there. And it is a comeback worthy of champions. East defeat Gold Coast United in the grand final reunion. It was a second half comeback. Emma Starr, an own goal for Kyla Hansen. Spectacular finish, seven minutes from time. Give East all three points in this round six matchup. I'm James Coglin. Thank you very much for watching. And if you are about to go celebrate, have a very happy St. Patrick's Day. This has been a, pro this has been a production of Double Take Sports for Football Queensland. Good night.